It's one of the most abundant minerals on the Earth's surface. But quartz is anything but ordinary. My name is Thomas Nagin, and I'm a mineral explorer. For the last 35 years, I've traveled the world in search of the finest gems, crystals, and minerals. Now, I'm taking you along with me. Oh, it's humid in here. <laughs> we'll visit some of the richest mines and discover just what it takes to unearth these natural treasures. This is going to be one heck of an explosion. It's OK. Come on. My job takes me all around the world in search of rare and natural gems and minerals. But my favorite stone is found right here in my own backyard. Hot Springs, Arkansas is best known for its healing waters, which have attracted Native American tribes, legendary baseball players, notorious gangsters, and even presidents. But in the mineral community, this area is famous for producing some of the world's finest quartz. Prized by collectors and decorators for its beauty, it's one of my most popular minerals. Most people don't really know this, but because of its chemical structure, every single quartz crystal naturally grows with six sides. These aren't polished, they're not cut, they naturally form like this. I think they're amazing. What most people look for is a clear crystal with a nice termination or point and no damage. But quartz is more than just beautiful. When electricity passes through quartz, it vibrates an exact number of times per second. This highly accurate frequency makes quartz an ideal mineral for radios, watches, computers, and many other electronic devices. But in the metaphysical community, quartz energy is used for a more spiritual purpose. Touted by many cultures for its healing properties, quartz is used in a variety of treatments. I've been dealing with quartz for over 35 years, and I've never had any kind of quartz treatment. My friend Brenda convinced me to come in and give it a try. Hi, Brenda. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Have a seat. Hop okay. Table. All right. I'm excited. I've never had a uh, quartz treatment before. I'm a registered nurse, and I work for hospice. I also am a certified Reiki master teacher. I'm a certified hypnotherapist, and I'm a certified crystal healer. <laughs> Okay, I want you to start taking some deep breaths now. That's right. I believe there is a healing vortex here. It's called the Valley of Healing because for thousands of years, the Native Americans came here. This was one of their sacred sites and they came because of the quartz and the healing waters. Thomas? Mm -hmm. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, around my low. I could tell you went to sleep a little bit. Did I? Mm -hmm. What the quartz does is it amplifies your energy back to you. It helps you to feel whatever energy you're holding within you. So when you feel something from the quartz, you're really feeling your own energy, your own self. That was really restful, really. It? Yeah, it was really nice, yeah. I figured you were tired. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't. It was just, you just, yeah, I wasn't really tired. No, I was kind of energized when I came in here, but it, it kind of just really mellowed me out. You had that 
sweet, cute little snore going. <laughs> Did, did we get the snore on film? <laughs> <laughs> the best Arkansas quartz is found in the Washita Mountains surrounding Hot Springs. Nearby Mount Ida is dubbed the quartz crystal capital of the world and home to the annual World Championship Quartz Crystal Dig. It's a competition dig, and this year they've asked me to be a judge. The competition is held in conjunction with the Quartz, Quilts, and Crafts Festival, a showcase of locally made arts and crafts and all things quartz. The competition diggers have two days to hunt for crystals at participating mines and are competing for the best cluster and point. There are small, family-operated quartz mines all over this area. The majority are open to the public who can pay a small fee to come in and dig for the day. The two mines that are participating in this year's competition are the Sweet Surrender and the Wegner Mines. Good morning. Welcome everybody to Sweet Surrender. Thanks for choosing us. We're going to uh, do our best to get you uh, down in there, digging some good rocks. Uh, have a good time. The mine is operated by Aaron Skates and his dad, Randy who's owned Sweet Surrender for the last 14 years. Did anybody dig here before you guys were here? Yeah, uh, Randy said that whenever he opened it up, he uh, saw some hand digs, some okay. older ones, and what looked like he said was ancient ones. Prospectors from, you know, 100 years ago or so, and then even further back with the Indians. You know, just, just really? potholing just all over this ridge here. For the Native Americans, quartz was used to craft arrowheads and has even been found in burial sites. Thousands of years later, people are still captivated by Arkansas's favorite mineral. This is a point that has had two different kinds of water run over it, two different kinds of minerals, and there's a line right there that differentiates between the two colors. So it was um, formed at different times during the years so there's different minerals in them. It just looks so cool. This year's competition has attracted mineral enthusiasts from all across the country, including seasoned rock hounds and first timers. You've never dug for any kind of crystals No, it's the first time. I always wanted to do it. I just collect rocks. Oh, okay. So, so have you found anything here so far? Not much. I'm kind of digging here, just trying to find so Aaron, is he, digging in a, is he digging in a good place? Uh, yeah, he's digging in a good place. Yeah. Uh, all that he's digging. Oh, look at that. See? My, that'll work. Well, that's, that's a good found. one. Got a little rainbow on there. Oh, that's, yeah. that's, that's going to take a place, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a nice one. That's, that's a really good crystal. Yeah, right on, man. Hold on to that one. In fact, let me hold on to it. I'll hold on to it. <laughs> no, I got it. I got it. <laughs> found Ooh. some good glass points out of here. And there's a, they'll, they'll clean yeah. up nicely. They're, these... Some different shape tabbies, the flat crystals, and then the normal crystals, and some doubles. Well, this is, I, I like this yeah, guy this, this right here. This is a double term one. Yeah, yeah. right. Uh -huh. a nice big double yeah, term. Yeah, nice big one. DT, yeah. That's, uh, that's a good DT there. Yeah, so this one is terminated on both ends. That's why they call it a doubly terminated yes. one. Um, Did you find a pocket of them, or are you just finding them here and there? It's, we're, we're in a seam. It's a seam, and it's it just kind of opens up a little bit into some minor flat pockets. We're hoping for a a wider pocket, but uh -huh. uh, it beats the office, that's for sure. Beats the office. And finding that in the dirt is like, wow, that's pretty cool. I just, <laughs> it's, there's a thrill to that. It's like digging for treasure. It is. It's I true. think so. I think so, yes. On day two of the competition at the Wegner Quartz Mine, many participants were finding loose quartz crystals right under their feet. Yeah, they're nice pretty and nice and glassy. Eh? But former state geologist Mike Coward explains why the best crystals take a little extra work. This is the sandstone, it's right. the host rock, and these are fractures that have infilled with quartz, a right. uh, little larger, a little smaller. These filled in rapidly and 
didn't have any pockets, but this is the kind of thing you're looking to find where the junction or the intersection of two or more of those veins or open spaces came together, because then you often have crystals that are formed in those larger open spaces. So when you get two or more veins together, it's more likely you're gonna get a bigger space. Right, uh -huh. and therefore, nice crystals. So what the, the people here that mine do is they follow these veins, right? Right. If they hit one of these veins, they'll follow it till, it, till hopefully it, it hits another vein. On this side of the mine, more serious competitors use tools, teamwork, and most importantly, elbow grease to find the bigger, harder to reach specimens. Wow, look at that. Oh. Some of the returning champions have their own tactics for finding the very best specimens. Anybody want as much as you? Me. <laughs> oh, you? Okay, boy, this is a sweet piece. Look at this. This is great. This is a real nice batch here. Yeah, a lot of times it'll take you a whole day. I mean, this right here was here. See that crystal on the bottom? Oh, wow. Look That's at that. That's what I'm after. That's why I just moved this rock out, and I was trying to get that. You got to go around. And I may go right into there, right into here. Let's see. What else What else are you digging out over there on the left? That's all part of this. Oh, okay, that's oh. part of that van. Uh-oh, did you just stick I yourself? I just made a hole, see? Oh, jeez, <laughs> he's bleeding already. I have had blood all day. That tore, when it's raining, your gloves get like this. It's like wearing glass sandpaper <laughs> when you're grabbing these bars, so. But those uh, quartz uh, wounds heal up pretty quick, don't they? I don't have to use the clay. Yeah, I'm fixing to take this one out right here. Deeper than I thought, which is good. There it's moving. There it's coming right now. Look at that. <sighs> wow, nice. That's a nice piece. Too bad they weren't hooked together, but that's the way a lot of times it comes out of the ground. Yeah, that is a nice one. That's called a chisel point when it's square on top like that. Yep, that's, that's great. You guys that's are doing a wonderful pretty decent over here. one right there. But uh, and it just keeps going down. The vein does, yeah. Yep. And see, every time you loosen a hole like that, you could just open right up into another one. That's the bottom of the pocket, mm -hmm. huh? Yep. When it comes out white quartz like okay. that. With time winding down, we checked in with a few of the other competitors. You dug this? I just dug that, yeah. You see another that's cluster right one. there. Yeah, that is. You know, oh, the points are coming oh, out nice, that size. That's, that's a, a nice good clean one. Point. Yeah. Most found some pretty good rocks. I don't know how you're going to tote that in the car. Others, not so good. The big yard rock. <laughs> Digging for crystals can be really tiring, but with a little bit of patience and a lot of hard work, there's often a big reward. Did you just dig that? Yes, I did. Oh, great. You've been digging for two days. Yeah, two days in the same, same pit down there. I don't know, I've been seeing this part the whole time for the last two hours. So I had to pry, that's why it's cracked a little bit right here. So have you ever won a prize at a dig before? No, everybody I bring here wins, so this time <laughs> well, I'm... Well, you, your turn. luck might have changed, believe me. <laughs> I, so. yep. I believe that's the number one point. Though. That's a great piece. Congratulations. Win or lose, Everybody leaves with a little piece of Arkansas. All right. See you guys later. At the end of the day, the miners turn in one cluster and one point for judging. The champions not only get to keep what they find, but also win cash prizes and bragging rights. Besides myself, this year's judges include local mine owners Judy Morton, who's judged this event for over 20 years, and Jeff Burrow of Collier Creek. Each judge gives the crystals a monetary value based on factors like condition, clarity, and form. Both of the points are perfect. They're large. Uh, it's not as clear as the last one that we were looking at, but 
I think I like it a little bit better just because of its size and it has good form. I think when this cleans up, all this mud will come out of here and it'll, it'll be a really nice cluster. It'll look totally different when they're clean. The scores are then combined and those with the highest scores win. Looks to me like you're the highest one on there. That would be so cool. I can't, <laughs> I can't wait to tell my brother he didn't come this year. Getting to dig your own that hasn't seen the light of day in ever, maybe. Uh -huh. It just means so much. Now for what everybody's been hoping for, our first place winner on Point, Susie Bloss. I dug at the Sweet Surrender mine both days. It rained very, very hard. And as I was walking down, back down from my car, when it quit raining, just a little tiny corner was sparkling in the sun. And I got so excited because this was just beautiful. In the cluster field, our first place cluster from Nelson, Missouri, is Nathan Lugin. Congratulations. Man. Yeah, I was digging in at the Wagner mine, and, and I found this, the tip of this one. And then I took another two hours to, to dig this out without damaging it at all. I won first place, plaque, and then $250 check. And plus a bunch of friends and smiles. It's against the rules for the competitors to clean the quartz before they're judged. But once they take their treasures home, they can really make them shine. Tim Godwin has been working with me for over 20 years, and he's a master at making quartz look its best. These are quartzes that just came out of the mine and still have the mud in them. This piece here, for example, is full of clay. This is how it looks after it comes out of the mine and it's been rinsed once or twice. But as you can see, there's clay down in between the crystals. Now, uh, Tim, could you uh, rinse this sucker off for us here? The crystals all get a high pressure wash before going into an oxalic acid bath to remove the orange iron stains and the black bits of manganese. Well, now that we have the basket full, we're ready to put them in oxalic acid which we're gonna heat up and boil overnight. And then when we pull them tomorrow, we'll have beautiful clear quartz. A good long soak, up to a week or so, will also do the trick. But the industry standard is to heat the acid almost to a boil to speed up the cleaning process. Then let it cool and give it a good rinse. Removing the stains really shows off the clarity Arkansas Quartz is famous for, making these pieces showroom ready. Looks good, huh? While clarity is king, for some collectors and decorators, it's all about size. And the legendary Coleman's Mine in Jesseville produces some of the biggest and best. Most visitors to the Coleman's Mine dig their own crystals in the overburden that's been removed from the mine below. Oh, look at that one. But we've been granted special permission to go down into the pit to see how the big boys play with the best rocks. They've recently uncovered a large pocket of quartz, but it takes some heavy lifting before they can really get into it. He's kind of uh, tapping on the crystals now. And when it sounds kind of hollow, he can tell that it's, it's kind of loose and it's ready to come off of the wall. Mm -hmm. So you'll take the loose ones off first, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's one that sounds different. Yeah. And by taking those ones that sound hollow off, it makes it easier to take things out without damaging it. Mm -hmm. So you get them out of the way, yep. and then you can take out the ones that are uh, solid sounding afterwards. Yeah. Look at that, I can see that, that sucker is really clear. Like there's a really nice, odd one. That's terminated all the way around, yeah, right? all the way around. Yeah. Yeah. Broke and rehealed it. 
The Coleman's have been working this mine for five generations, beginning with Charlie Coleman. Today, it's owned and operated by his grandson, Ron Coleman, who carries on the family tradition. This pocket here, it was just totally filled full of clay. We pulled most of the clay out of it down to here. This is just solid clay because it's just a big pocket. Those kids yesterday up in Mount Ida that were digging, they love this. Wow. The first one ever get to see that. It looks like it's going to be really clear. All right, this is a good sized crystal, and it would probably win a prize in Mount Ida. But here, it's just really a mediocre one. <laughs> it's still pretty nice. All right. Wow, that's a nice one. It's got a little one growing on the side. It's going to be pretty when it's cleaned up. Wrapping them up in paper helps them stay protected until they get them out of the mine and they can clean them. Because just two of them bumping together will chip both of them. Their value can be diminished by 90% just by a little chip on the top termination. With the majority of the loose crystals removed, they can now bring in the bigger equipment to extract the large cluster. How big is that thing? It's going to be a pretty good chunk. It'll come apart, though. <laughs> it's a pretty good chunk. <laughs> All right. They're getting ready to lift this baby out of there. I can't wait to see what it looks like. These are, fan these are fantastic crystals here. They're really clear. <laughs> oh yeah. This is gonna be a fantastic cluster. I can't wait to see what this looks like when it's all cleaned off. You can see the points sticking out here. All this mud will come out. See, there's some loose crystals in here, like this. When all of these come out and all the clay comes out, they're gonna be really beautiful. To get an idea of what these large clusters look like once they've been cleaned, we met up with Ron. Nature is the world's greatest artist, and the natural beauty of quartz was the inspiration for our last destination. A once popular tourist attraction, the Crystal Cave, has been closed to the public for decades. But the owner was kind enough to invite us in to document a piece of Arkansas history. Wow. Wow, this is awesome, man. <laughs> I bought the cave because it was an opportunity to protect it and to preserve it. It's a part of hot springs that I could not see destroyed. This is a fireplace. They actually had gas here. Looks like an altar there, didn't it? Yeah, that's uh, Quan Yin. She is the, the goddess of healing and compassion. She's like the Dalai Lama. She went to the uh, gates of Nirvana and turned back so she could um, help mankind. And I find it fascinating that she's here. So Quan Yin is the goddess of healing. How appropriate that they should use Quan Yin in a cave that's filled full of crystals, because crystals are also known as being a healing stone. Look at these crystals here. These crystals are incredibly clear. Some of them especially, you can see them all the way through them, and you can see the striations on the back side of them. And some of them are long, and some of them are thin, and some of them are big and stocky. And they've put them together in a magnificent 
way that's really artistic. They've mixed the clusters and the individual crystals together to make a room that's really a piece of art. Can you see through there? <laughs> Cool. <laughs> it's amazing the number of really nice clusters and really nice points that are in the that are set in the walls here. Wow. One thing I've seen is that quartz brings out the passion in people. Built by a father and son from their own collection. This monument to quartz is an example of just how infatuated people are with this unique mineral. Just takes your breath away. If you want to see more episodes or check out our mineral collection, click the link in the description. And of course, like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Mineral Explorers.